They're after me. They're after me. <laughs> Earlier in the year, those of you that follow my, my blog and my websites and so forth know that um, I got sick. I, I uh, have kind of developed an allergic reaction to products with DEET in them. It wasn't pleasant. It was, it was pretty rough. It, it pretty much canceled my trip. I started out at like 8 o'clock in the morning and by the time uh, 11 o'clock rolled around I was throwing up and, and outright sick. Uh, I, I need something different. I need something new because I'm not going to give this up just because I, I don't have a bug spray that uh, is, is super toxic. <laughs> you know, So I figured I, I look around on the internet and lo and behold I came across a, a company called Turtle Moon. Now Turtle Moon is a, a very small company but as soon as I heard about my plight and what had happened to me they rushed me a four pack of their product, Turtle Moon's Nature's Cloak. Uh, and I better zop myself in the head with this stuff now. It's been working wonderfully. It doesn't work on everything. I did notice we the one trip I had like hundreds and thousands of black flies. Didn't really help them much. But it doesn't really say it's for black flies. So like it says right on it, it says for mosquito and ticks. You know, there's a whole list of, of all natural ingredients in here, and it says it's safe for the dog. So I've been noticing that you know the mosquitoes have been, they haven't been lighting on him, but they've been pestering him. So I took a little bit of this, rubbed it in my hand, and, and pet him, and they haven't been bothering him. So that's uh, a good thing. Um, it's kind of kind of neat that uh, that it worked for him. I could tell that just the buzzing around him was getting him upset. Now, Nature's Cloak, I have not seen it advertised anywhere but on the internet. Okay, so I'm um, I'm assuming that that's that's the main resource right now for for purchasing Nature's Cloak. It doesn't mean that that'll be forever. So keep your eye out for it. A product that works this good usually doesn't stay a secret very long. I really like the small mom and pop businesses and to be honest I think that's what makes the world go around. I really do. I haven't seen a tick yet all day so it must be working. When I first started hiking back in the 1980s, besides being a lot thinner, I found myself very upset by the number of campfire rings that had literally turned into miniature mountains of old coals, broken rocks, and debris such as broken bottles and burned out tin cans. The tallest one I actually measured at three feet high off the ground. Fortunately, and thanks to great trail maintenance, these altars of rock and trash have mostly been cleaned up and the remains reclaimed by the environment. It was around this time that I came up with the Rock Karen fireplace and started leaving them behind everywhere I saw large fire pits still in use, promoting the fact that there was a cleaner and better way. Sadly, over my years of diminished mobility, they have all but completely disappeared and my inability to replace them has pushed the idea into complete obscurity. Based on the use of fire pans used in the West for horse and mule packing, the only thing required for the Rock Karen fireplace is the use of two large and relatively flat rocks, one used as the hearth or base and the other used as a cover to shield the fire from the weather. After receiving several requests over the years to elaborate on the construction of the Rock Karen fireplace, I had to push the idea aside knowing full well that my years of toting rocks through the woods came to an end a while back. That is until recently, when one of my closest friends, artist, photographer, and now disabled hiker film crew, Larry Deitch, offered to hike out and move the rocks needed to rebuild the fireplace on site. 
construction is fairly simple. Once the larger hearth stone is in place, smaller stones are placed in a U-shaped pattern around the edges before capping them off with the smaller flat cover stone. And with my hearth stone set in place, I was ready to begin. When coming up with the rock Karen fireplace, as a method of reverse engineering, I tried to keep in mind four specific issues I had with the old fire rings. The first was aesthetics. The old fire pits, although traditional in nature, left an obvious scar on the landscape, and with no one disposing of old ash and charcoal, these fire pits soon took on their more mountainous appearance. Second was stealth. By disassembling and dispersing the rock Karen fireplace, it's possible to take no trace camping to a whole new level. Third was fuel efficiency. Utilizing the compact construction and reflective properties of the rocks, the rock Karen fireplace burns half the fuel of a traditional open fire pit. Shunko, what are you doing? Don't dig. And last was mobility. In my younger days, when I saw rain coming, I thought nothing of moving the rock Karen fireplace to just outside my tarp, knowing full well that the cap or cover stone would protect the flames from the rain, yet continue to provide me with light and warmth for as long as I could feed it. As you know, heating the wrong rocks can lead to problems. So utilizing the rocks from old fire pits can help you build a safe rock Karen fireplace. Besides being great fireplaces, I've also used the rock Karen as a cooking hearth as well. As I finished building what may very well be my last rock Karen fireplace, I did so with the hope that I have sufficiently passed on my knowledge and that this will not be the last I see of them. Voila. <laughs>